So my mistake actually occurred. If you look at the um, debugging pro uh, debugging process, my intention was to show you how comprehensive can it get. So it actually it's actually telling me on which script the error occurred and on which line is the uh, pro compiler facing problem. So it's actually correct that I need to change the uh, anchor tag, the query string that I passed along inside the href attribute of the anchor tag of HTML5 element. Now, this line 40, if you look at this line 40, it's actually in here. So this line 40 needs to be corrected. So I need to uh, erase this off. It's also telling you what sort of error occurred at the um, at the beginning of this uh, at this debugging uh, screen. It's also telling you where it's occurring and it's also telling you the absolute path in which your script resides. So let's correct this and let's see what can be the output. Let's save this and let's erase this off. It's actually quite bothering me. And let's put this up at the uh, before the loop so let's save this now and let's refresh this page yep so although it's all jumbled up together but you can clearly see that we have three questions so if we click the first question it passes along the questions one and our first question which is our first element that holds the first question gets printed on the browser what happens if you try to click the third one so the third question that we created from is being retrieved from the third element of the array so our third question was where do you live so it correctly gets stored now what happens if suppose the user did not pass along anything so this is the default state that we are looking into so in the default state you can actually see that there are no query strings because if the user or the visitor clicked on any of your questions a query string would have been passed into or it would have been appended at the end of the switch or uh, at the end of this url so because we don't have any user input and hence we also don't have a query string appended at the end so we now we are now at the default state or the default we are looking at the default behavior of the script so our script was supposed to print out the second element or the second question from the second element inside this array so it is actually quite successful in doing it so if you look at our script if we look at both of them parallelly, it's printing out the uh, it's printing out the um, second question from the second element of the questions array. So our default one was two. Now let's get back to our script and let's understand what's happening in here. Um, maybe I should add a beer tag in here. Let's save this. I don't know. I wish it doesn't. Yep. Now it's quite fine. Now let's understand the script. So the first thing that we have done is to create a parameter and from the parameter we are going to use the URL structures and inside this URL structures we are going to pass along this questions array. Now this name is going to uh, this URL uh, question is going to store the default value of 2 so if you look carefully this is actually the array that we looked along when I highlight this questions it's also highlighting all the questions array in here which means I'm referring to the questions array that I've created in here so this is just the same thing as I've already told you along uh, uh, using this uh, when we created this conditional.cfm script. So this questions, uh, this questions array has now the default value of two. 
so this default value of 2 means it has the default index of 2 so this is the default index so if you look carefully when I highlight this it's also highlighting my my editor is also highlighting the second element of this questions array so whenever the user does not produce or whenever we don't get any input from the user we get along with the default value and we print that on our browser so that even if we do not have any input we still can show some sort of output on our, on our web page so it's just the same thing I've just added a new ID uh, structure that holds the string uh, in L as uh, that holds the string of alphabets the first one has a and b and c and now we need to look at their use cases so inside this cf switch uh, tags that you're looking at if you look carefully we first use the expression attribute and because we are going to retrieve uh, we're going to retrieve the elements from our questions array we are also going to you we are also uh, retrieving the structures along with those uh, arrays so if suppose if we retrieve the first element from this um, from this array inside here then we are also retrieving the ID the quest the first ID of a the first uh, question and the first answer we are not just retrieving their indexes we are also retrieving the structures that we have stored inside them so in here what we are doing we are passing along the uh, qu uh, we are passing along uh, we are passing along the value of the index uh, from the arrays uh, f uh, that uh, from the index of the arrays and we are storing that inside the URL so whenever the user clicks on to some of the links whenever the user clicks on any of the link uh, that you can see on the right side of the screen when uh, and each of these questions are a link so if a user clicks on them that value that index value gets stored inside this URL so when that uh, when that value gets stored inside this URL it looks into this CF script and then it retrieves that value along with the ID the question and the answer so if the user clicked on the third question it's going to retrieve the ID of C it's going to uh, retrieve the question of where do you live it's also going to retrieve the answer doc DACA so uh, then when it retrieves that value it's going to match the ID now in here the case statement are actually selection points so the switch is telling the compiler retrieve the value from the URL and then match the value that you have retrieved from the ID structure so if the ID is C it's going to set uh, it's going to uh, retrieve the question from the third element and it's also going to retrieve the answer from the third element and it's going to set those values it's going to set those values which means that it's going to set the string value of where do you live and it's also going to set the string value of Taka to both of these variables so the first questions um, value gets stored inside this question value uh, question variable and the second string of Taka gets stored inside this answer variable and you can see this clearly so if I repeat that again I'll be repeating that one more time is that whenever the user clicks on any of those links it's going to uh, it's it, it is going to select this array indexes so whenever the user clicks on the third suppose for example it uh, the user clicks on the third element so the script the switch statement is going to look at this parameter so the parameter already had a default value but now because we have an user input it's going to look at the list it's going to look at the indexed element of the array so when the user clicks on the third it's going to look at the 
third index and it's going to retrieve everything inside that third index it's going to retrieve the ID the question and the answer and when it gets